Yeah, hi guys. Uh, welcome to this very quick tutorial in which I show you guys how is it that you can install and set up an online cloud SQL Server database. Okay. So for this, we'll be using Amazon's AWS. That is because AWS offers us a free one-year trial almost, right? Okay. And you know, this is more aimed towards people you know who can't install SQL Server on the system and you know hence can't follow along with the course. Okay. Like people like Mac users, right? Because they can't, there's no SQL server directly available for the Mac. So what you can do is maybe you can set up an online server over here, and from there you can just access it. Okay. So here I'll be showing you guys how you can actually do this entire thing for yourself also. Okay, guys. So first of all, for this, you need to go to this website over here that is aws.amazon.com. No, forward slash RDS. Okay. Most of you might have shared this link with you guys, right? Okay. And you know, it might look a bit different, but that's really not an issue, right? You will be seeing all the main options. Okay. So, first of all, just go over here and I'll click on sign in. Okay. And over here, in case you have not created an account yet, you need to click, click on this button over here. And from here, you know, you can create a normal account. So, but for my case, I actually do have my account already created. Okay. So I'll just enter my details over here and log in. Okay, guys. So I'll just log into my account, right? Okay. And you know, it, this also might look a bit different. Okay. But to be on the same page, you can just go to the search bar over here and here you can just type in RDS. Okay, and this is the system I want. Okay, I'll just click on this RDS over here and over here, right? And once I click on it, it'll actually take me to this one page. Okay, that is something like this. Okay. And from here, I'll tell you how you can actually go over to the creation of the database. Okay. So, so look, guys, you can just go over here, and when you scroll down over here, you'll see this part that is the create database. And you need to click on this button, and it will take you to this one more page over here. Okay. And I'll tell you how you can go. First of all, the first option, guys, and this is your actual database creation. Okay. You have to click on easy create over here. Okay. And once you create on easy create, and here we can go to below some configuration settings. Okay. So here guys actually going for the SQL server because that is what is covered as part of the course that is taught over here in analytics labs. So I'll just click on Microsoft SQL Server. And here, guys, we need to select the free tire. Okay. So this is, you know, as part of the free plan, this is what they offer, right? This is with one virtual CPU, one GB RAM, right? And here I can just type in the name, what is that I want after I select the free tire. I'll just put in practice DB. And over here I need to cl click in the login username and password for the database, okay? So here I'll just go with this one, let it be admin. And over here, let me just go with some password, okay? Okay, and let me just re-enter the same password. One. Okay, and after that, guys, you know it's pretty straightforward. I just click on Create Database, and okay, yeah. So it's giving me the error that must contain. Mm -hmm. Let me just remove this hyphen and most of the smart issue. Right, okay. Yeah, so you know this now currently this database is creating, okay. And there is a small wait time for this, okay. So you might need to wait you know, by I think five, ten minutes for this, okay. And meanwhile, let me just uh, tell you about some other things. Okay, first of all, right, guys, this 
you know as part of the free offering by aws it is meant that you use only the free tier and only one instance of the database is allowed okay so if you create multiple instances of the databases you will be actually charged for the usage okay so make sure that you only create one instance and you don't you know you don't fidget around for your own best okay and you know as long as you follow this tutorial as it is you're not going to face any problem whatsoever okay but if you you know change things because it's highly technical tool that is raid up this right if you change some things here and there you know some issues might happen so you know i would really suggest right for at least for the time being yes you can just follow the tutorial as it is okay so guys i'll just you know i'll just pause the recording over here and uh, let it actually i'll wait, wait for some time let the creation actually happen and then you know we'll resume and one more thing guys you know meanwhile it's creating over here right when you click on this button you view credential details you can actually see what is the username and the password you this, this is basically just what you typed previously okay but just for clarity sake you can use it once more right this is your username and this is your password and this is from what you'll actually log in your you know server with okay Okay, guys. So it looks like you know finally our uh, server engine has been created. And in case you know you can't see this page with the status over here is given as available, and maybe you can just refresh it. Maybe it is you no, know, it is frozen or something like that. And ideally, right, guys, you should be able to see this that is with the status available over here like this. Okay, and once you're able to see this over here, the status is available. That means the database engine has been created. Okay, so I'll tell you, we actually need to sort of change a couple of more things over here. Okay, and I'll tell you how we can go about with it. Okay, so I'll just click on this database and let me open this in a link, new tab, or you know, if I click on it, it's all right like this. Okay, and over here. I am going to get a couple of more things over here. Okay, I'll tell you what we need to do over here. Okay, so here you have this button called modify. I need to click on that first. Okay, and over here, right? I'll tell you what are the settings that you need to modify. Okay, so first of all, guys, right? You just call down over here. Okay, first thing we need to modify is the security group over here. Okay, I'll tell you how. Okay, first of all, right? How I can modify this is right on the default, it is this one. Okay, but instead of that, what I'll rather choose is let me create one security group, and how I can do that is you know. I can just go to the search bar. Let me go to the previous tab because we want that to be visible. And here, let me just put in right VPC security group. Okay, and here you might get it over here. Security groups VPC feature. Okay, so let me clear, click on that. Okay, and over here I need to click on. Create security group. Okay, and I can give it a name. Okay, my group. Okay, so you know basically what this security group does is you know it does it specifies the parameters you know on who can access the server you know where can it access be accessed from, and what we are doing over here is you know to create a security group that is very very flexible that can be accessed anywhere. Okay. So let me just you know this it's a very flexible group. Okay. And here you know I need to add the rules. Okay. So first of all, inbound rule. Okay, so I'll just add one rule and here let me put in all TCP and here and the source let me put in anywhere IPv4 like this. Okay. And let me add in one more rule just to you know for 
better sex, right? Let me put in one more all TCP and source. Let me put in IP v6 over here. Okay, the above one was IP v4 anywhere IP v4 and the below one was IP v6. Okay, and in the outbound rules also I do something similar. Okay, so the first one is already created for us, and the destination I'll just make it as IP v4 and let me add in one more that is. All traffic. Okay. Yeah, one more thing I said it's not all TCP, rather it's all traffic over here. Okay. So all traffic. And here let me just once again put an IPv6 and create create a security group. Okay, the security group is created. And now let me actually go here and not getting it currently. Let me just refresh it over here. Right. I get this group called my group. That is my group, right? That is what I just created. Okay, I'll select this over here. Okay, see it has it has been created. Okay, and, uh, let me close the default group. Okay, and if I don't need that, I need only my group over here. It should be visible like this. That is one thing, and the next thing is it should be publicly accessible. Okay, let me click on over here. Okay, and make it publicly accessible. So that is it, case. Okay? So I'll just click on this and uh, let me click on continue over here. Okay. And let me just, I get this window over here. I want to press continue and let me over here actually let me click apply immediately. Okay. And finally click on modify DB instance over here. And this is actually doing the modification. Okay. And it looks like it's already been modified, okay? And now let me actually go proceed ahead and show you guys how is it that you can log in, okay? So first of all, let me go back to my database. I can show you how is it, where is it that you can get your ID over here, okay? See guys, what you see over here, this is your actual URL and this is your port number. And how you log in is, let me first of all show you guys the SMS itself, okay? Okay, so guys, if here it is visible as adding, maybe it is the security groups haven't been modified yet. No, I think for clarity purposes, let's just actually wait and let it be added. Okay, guys. So now I just actually waited for some time, you know, for the groups to be completely added, and it might take five to ten minutes, right? Okay. And after that, you might you must see this over here, you know, the VP security group as my group and publicly accessible. Yes, this is a must. Okay. And once I do that, I'll show you how you can quickly log in. Okay. So if I just open up my SMS and here, right? Obviously, I need to go to the database engine and here in the server name, I'll tell you how what you need to do is first of all, you need to put in the endpoint like this. Okay, let me put in the endpoint. Okay, and then you put in a comma and you type in this port number over here. Okay, so here it will be comma one four three three like this. Okay, and for the authentication, I'll go for the SQL Server authentication. Okay, I need to go for that. And here, let me type in the login user that I specified previously and the password also. And now if I press connect, that is it guys. So you've actually logged into your system. And you know, everything is the same, right? If you want, you can create new databases on this, right? Create, right?
Yeah. Right, create database. Let me put in right test one and you have to run this obviously. A new database will be created, right? And I can see it over here if I wish to, right? And if I want, I can drop it also. Okay. See, after this, you notice that everything is the same, right? As if you had installed the system on your system itself. So you can just follow it as it is, okay? Now, I do understand that some people, right, the Mac users, they do not have SSMS and they'll be having the Azure Data Studio. And, uh, you know, the login procedure is pretty much the same. And I can even show you once here also, okay? Like she just launched the Azure Data Studio here. Okay. I've just launched it. Here, guys, I'll tell you how you can go about with it. See, over here, you have this button over here that is, you know, when you log in, right? You get this here. This is the window, and this is the connection over here. You can click on that, or you can click on this new connection. Okay, anything will go. Let me actually click on over here, new connection. And here, I need to specify the same details. First of all, right, the connection type, it's Michael SQL server. Let me put in the endpoint and comma, the port number 1433. And it's SQL login. Here, I once again specify the ID and password. Once I press on connect, like this. Yeah, so it has also been connected to your database for you. Okay. Okay, and here, if I see now, it says the usual thing itself, right? If I want to write a new query, you can just right click on something right like this. And here, I can write in a new query. I don't want to change the database, you know, it is as it is. That's why you are achieved database, right? And we go to master and we create a database. It is being run. Okay, yeah, you know, this is basically how it goes. And after this, you know, everything is as usual, right? Okay, and you can proceed with your practicing. Yeah, thank you, guys. So I'll be stopping the session. So, thank you.